violence and other kind of violence. So it is what it is. What's good, YouTube? It's a Black Gen Z mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, and let's get into the video. The drum beats louder and stronger tonight to stop the violence in Baltimore after a safe street worker was among three people shot and killed last night. Now, the killing pace for this new year is one a day. WMER 2 News' is Ray Strickland joins us live now in downtown Baltimore with more on the violence and the man who lost his life trying. I don't think y'all heard that. He said the killing pace is one a day in 2022. Run it back. Shot and killed last night. Now the killing pace for this new year is one a day. WMER 2 News' is Ray Strickland joins us live now in downtown Baltimore with more on the violence and the man who lost his life trying to stop it. Ray? 20 murders in just 20 days, Kelly, a disturbing trend for a city that once again surpassed 300 homicides just last year. As you mentioned, one of the latest victims, a safe streets violence interrupter, someone who worked hard to help make his community safer. So, guys, these violence interrupters are usually guys who come from the streets, probably did some time, learned from their ways, and now they're trying to make the community a safer, safer place. And usually what that consists of is trying to get these young dudes out of gangs and involved into community activities. Um, maybe it is some type of volunteer work or giving back, but they are usually trying to be that male figure in the community because we know in the community, a lot of the children are left without fathers. For, for him to only lose his life, in that same community. That's the tragedy of it all. Him trying to do good cost him his life. For the third time in less than two years, the violence reduction group Safe Streets is mourning the loss of one of their own. Deshaun McGreer was among three people shot and killed Wednesday night on East Monument Street in East Baltimore. Baltimore knows better than anybody how dangerous this work is and how value the people that do this work. In a post on Facebook, the Foundation Living Classroom says McGreer was a violence interrupter with their McEldry Park Safe Streets team. The nonprofit says he was actively engaged in making a better life for himself and his community. He was a contributor, a positive contributor to, uh, to society. And for him to be shot down like this and killed uh, you know, he, he was a good one. He was one of the good ones. Interrupting violence is what he was doing in this vi <laughs> So they, they want to show the clip where the police officer is going off on this brother right here. Okay. But this doesn't really sum up what's actually going on in Baltimore. Okay. A lot of these super gremlins are out of control. I wrote video before he was assaulted by a Baltimore police officer in 2018. That officer was ultimately sent to prison while McGreer received a settlement from the city. Warren Brown was his attorney. It makes you. Woo, okay, okay. So a little more context with this guy. You can tell he had an attitude, okay? He's in the cop's face. Now, what the officer did was completely wrong. But this is policing your own, okay? Like I said, this guy was probably in the streets before he became a violence interrupter. But what? Interrupting violence is what he was doing in this viral video before he was assaulted by a Baltimore police. How was he interrupting violence? <laughs> He was literally yelling at the cop. Officer in 2018. That officer was ultimately sent to prison while McGreer received a settlement from the city. Warren Brown was his attorney. It makes you wonder sometimes, you know, why do the good people have to have to be 
uh, targeted and, and, and killed. That, that question continues to get asked by fathers, mothers, sons, and daughters in Baltimore affected by the gun violence. And the calls for it to stop will only grow louder while the families continue to carry the pain of their loss forever. Our community is hurting right now. Uh, families are crying right now. And the Living Classrooms Foundation says a citywide Safe Streets response to this shooting is being planned for Saturday. The nonprofit is also looking to raise money for the McGreer family. And like I said, a lot of these violence interrupters were in the streets and possibly still in the streets. Um, I would assume that he was probably still in the streets if, you know, he, he went out the way he did. And they really didn't explain too well what went down so you know maybe he had turned his life around maybe he didn't but i didn't really see much violence interrupting from him in the few clips that they did play him arguing with the police and yelling in the police face that's that's just not the move um and then you know the fact that he was back out in the streets and he died in that way. I don't think Buddy was out there breaking up a fight, but I could be wrong. Who knows? In the meantime, if you have any information about this shooting, you're urged to give police a call. Reporting live tonight in downtown Baltimore, Ray Strickland, WMAR2 News. And tonight, Shante Jackson, the director of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, which oversees the Safe Streets program, released this statement. Safe Streets Baltimore is overwhelmingly heartbroken over the loss of Deshaun. He was uh, well respected by his community and worked diligently to shift the culture of violence in East Baltimore. Safe Streets is not just an organization, but a calling. Staff are feeling more determined to work aggressively to engage communities suffering from gun violence in the wake of this loss. It is no secret that gun violence is plaguing our city. It's a topic we followed for quite a while now. Listen to them keep saying gun violence, gun violence, gun violence. Look, these inanimate objects do not have autonomy over themselves. There's got to be somebody operating them. The issue is the super gremlin and the culture in which the super gremlins live that makes them think that it's okay to murder, rob, and do all sorts of other things. So far this year, we're on track to beat last year's number of homicides in Baltimore City. And tonight, city leaders are with, out with a grim reminder that Baltimore's violence is sparing no one and not even our children. WJZ is live tonight. Annie Rose Ramos has the findings of a new report on deaths among children in the city and spoke to one family still reeling over the loss of their daughter. Annie Rose. Vic, this report found homicides is the leading cause of death of children in this city. Now, three months ago, 13-year-old Malaya Turner was shot. Wow. Homicides is the leading cause of death in Baltimore of children. Think about that over anything else, not CV. Not anything else. Homicides. Somebody else taking their life is the number one cause of death of children in Baltimore. Shot and killed outside of a recreation center. And every single day since has been a bitter reality for her mother and father who ask, when will their daughter find justice? It's still like a nightmare to me, you know, to have somebody just snack from you like that. This is the aftermath. A mother in mourning after the loss of her daughter shot and killed in Baltimore City. Not only was she my baby, she was my sunshine even when it was raining. Mm. Nothing seems the same since he's been gone. On November 18, 13 year old Malaya Turner was killed outside this recreation center in Sandtown. There you have it. All we need is just some more rec centers and it'll clean the community up. Just put rec centers on every block and problem solved. <laughs> you know, I, I find it funny that these people keep suggesting programs and rec centers. That's not going to stop these super girlmans from getting on demon time. She was there for band <clears throat> practice. You couldn't tell me that was going to be the last day that I would ever, ever see my daughter. 
Nobody in the world could ever, ever could have told me that that day. A new report from the mayor's office on child fatality reveals how many of our children are dying in the city and why. In the past five years, 208 children died in Baltimore City. 90% of the children who died were children of color. Finding gun violence at the helm of many of these tragedies. Homicide was the... Now listen to what they just said. 90% of the children that died from gun violence or from super gremlin violence are children of color. Do you think that has anything, anything to do with systematic oppression, racism, and the likes? Leading cause of death of child fatality, claiming 69 children over these five years. The report also says in the past five years, 24 children were killed by a parent or caregiver, and 45 children were killed by a non-relative third party. Those lives should never have been lost to begin with. They really do need to focus on the crimes of the kids. They really do. But for parents like Malaya's, their fight is just starting for their daughter and for all the children. Little kids, little innocent kids, come on now. I want some justice for all the children. And Rick, this report also lays out recommendations to prevent future deaths. And some of those recommendations include more school partnerships and more violence intervention programs. Reporting live, I'm Manny Rose Ramos for WJZ. We're also learning more now about what it was like for the other students who were in school at the time. A student sharing their experience with News 4's Derek Ward about what it was like during that tense lockdown. A Magruder student who was in a classroom at the time of the shooting says the announcement of a lockdown around 1 p.m. was his first indication that something was wrong. Initially, I didn't really think anything of it um, until later on, which is when the lockdown lasted until for like almost an hour or so. He doesn't want to be identified, doesn't want his name used. He tells us that classmates were Googling the school, checking out social media sites, and that's how they found out about the shooting. By then, parents had also found out Wow, <clears throat> these kids were in class. Imagine being in class. Your school gets put on, put on lockdown. You don't know why. So you do a quick Google search of your school, and you find out that there has been a school shooting while you're on campus. Must be frightening. And police were en route. Our kids go to the same school and we um, were just on the phone trying to comfort each other. Now, parents had complained about the lack of information they were getting from authorities. Montgomery County Police Chief Marcus Jones said during a Zoom conference with Magruder parents, teachers, and students earlier today that it was a strategic decision not to tweet or release too much while the scene was active. Um, why do you think they didn't want to release much information? <laughs> Why do you think? Because usually when it's one of these school shootings, they're quick. They're quick to release the information. Oh, there's a school shooting and, and it's a suspected white supremacist. Why do you think they wanted mom's the word on this school shooting? I mean, you haven't heard about it in the mainstream media at all. OK. The reason is because the, the, the suspect was a super gremlin. That's why. Suspect may have had a cell phone and if we are tweeting out information that might be beneficial to that suspect that could be dangerous in its own right the good thing is is that our kids have cell phones right so we were yeah. keeping in touch with them they were giving us real-time updates meanwhile back in that oh wow so the police chief says it's a bad idea because you're giving the suspect updates on what the moves are from the police um the parents say it's good thing that the students had their cell phones because they could update us with what's going on. And obviously, those are two different um, sides of the spectrum, wanting two different things. The parents wishing for the safety of their kids while the suspect is wishing to harm as many or a certain individual in their school. That classroom where that student we spoke to was, police showed up. The police or the SWAT came in. They said to everyone, put their hands up. Um, so they went to the back of the classroom where the kid was, and they kind of pushed him to the ground. Um, they didn't use too much force, but obviously a little bit. Well, you know, if they would have used excessive force, you know, he would have said something. Even if this guy would have shot one of their classmates, he still would have said, man, the police were doing too much, man. <laughs> The police, they, they, they handled them a little bit too rough, right? 
So they cuffed him and they brought him outside. And we came up with a way to strategize to actually get the student and his uh, and those individuals who were in the class nearby with him to get them out of that room uh, safely. The suspect is now identified as 17-year-old Stephen Austin Jr. The student we spoke to says he doesn't know him. And he says after Austin was in custody, the police told the class to remain calm and escorted them to the auditorium while parents outside waited and worried. That's crazy. Remain calm. Okay, look. Um, obviously, these students were flustered. <clears throat> and I'll have a picture of Stephen Austin Jr., or whatever the information they have out on him. Um, I'll have a picture of him in the thumbnail. But obviously it was a super gremlin. We don't even have to. We don't even have to debate that. We all know that the majority of these school shootings. That go down across the United States. Are super gremlins. But the mainstream media neglects to say that. Or face that fact. Because it does not go along with the narrative. Of racist white boy crazy columbine type school shooter by 6 p.m the students were being dismissed and the investigation that may yield answers to their questions and those of authorities would begin in montgomery county Derek ward news 4. and stay with news 4 and our nbc washington app for updates all weekend long on the latest developments on that school shooting Good evening, everyone. I'm Leon Harris. Tonight, one high school student is recovering from surgery to repair a gunshot wound. The student suspected of shooting him is spending the night in police custody. Crime scene investigators. Just the night? No, but seriously, guys, I, um, I tried to find a picture of the shooter, and it's nowhere to be found um, unless you guys actually attended Magruder High School and have a yearbook picture then <clears throat> I don't think I'll have any luck right now because this is pretty much um, very close to when this happens. So maybe they'll wait to release the picture or maybe they won't release it at all because um, he's not 18. But whew, um, I couldn't find the picture of Stephen Alston Jr. So um, I wanted to watch some of the student interviews and kind of get an idea of who this guy was. Still working tonight inside Magruder High School, searching for clues. We're working for you with comprehensive team coverage tonight. News 4's Jackie Benson is speaking with students and parents. Some say that they were left in the dark today. But we begin with the investigation, what police know, and what they're still trying to piece together. For that, we go now to our Shamari Stone. Police tell us they found the suspected teenage shooter in a classroom with help from tips. The teen who he is accused of shooting is at a hospital. The Montgomery County State's Attorney, the school superintendent, and the police chief give us the latest with this investigation. Montgomery County Police are currently on the scene and investigating a shooting. Police Chief Marcus Jones tells. Marcus Jones, police chief of this jurisdiction in Maryland. We got we got a lot of representation. I'm not going to lie. OK, almost all the videos that I do, we have representation in a leadership position. A 17 year old student is in custody after allegedly shooting another student at Magruder High School Friday afternoon. High school security became aware of a situation in one of the school's bathrooms. A male, a Magruder High School student had been shot and 911 was called. The school went into full lockdown around one o'clock. A SWAT team and police searched the building for two hours. The chief says around three o'clock p.m. they found the 17 year old suspect in a classroom and recovered a gun. The victim. Dang. <laughs> so this man shot somebody and then went to class. That's wild. <laughs> That's different student was transported to a area hospital and is in serious condition and is currently in surgery. We asked if detectives have determined a motive. How did the gun get into the school and was the student shot in the bathroom? But at this point in time, I don't we don't know all the answers to those questions. Police are interviewing witnesses and crime scene investigators are collecting evidence. Meanwhile, the school superintendent prays for the teen who was shot. Let me offer my thoughts and prayers as well to the young man who was. Damn. 
The superintendent is even a sister, man. Woo, we really winning out here. We really winning when it comes to these leadership positions. Um, it's just these young super gremlins. Y'all got to get them under control. It's injured today and his family. Police have not released the name of the suspected shooter or the teenage victim. A bond hearing is scheduled for sometime early next week. In Durwood, I'm Shamari Stone, News 4. Feelings of fear, panic, and worry extended outside the school to the parents who were waiting to see their children. They rushed there to the scene, hoping that the students would be released quickly, many of them feeling unsettled as they just sat there for hours waiting. I'm completely down and broke, you know, like uh, you don't know what happened and when. Yeah. And when my daughter texted me, I was shocked and shaking. Yeah can only imagine. News Force Jackie Benson has more reaction from students and parents reunited after many tense hours. I was in the class with all my friends, so like we were just like, we were think we weren't really thinking about like how it happened and stuff. We were just thinking like positive things. We were just like joking around. So these dudes hear that a school shooting is going down at your school and y'all joking around? <laughs> Boy, super gremlins don't take none seriously, do we? We just trying to, like, not put our mind on to. Magruder High School student Xavier Perkins was met about 6.15 p.m., the end of a very long school day, by his mother, who was in tears, and his grandmother, who was none too pleased about what she described as a lack of communication about the shooting inside the school. I've been here since quarter to two when, the, when my grandson sent out an alert that they were on lockdown. So I've been here the whole time waiting, trying to figure out what's going on. She was not alone in her assessment. Parents sat in their cars on the side of the road and in any parking lot they could find, waiting, worrying, wondering when their kids would be released. Uh, we don't know if they are going to send him on the bus or we need to pick him up. The teachers are doing a good job, but I don't think they were getting a lot of messages from the school itself, like no um, updates. No updates. All of them told us they were relieved and grateful. Their children had been able to text them to say they were okay. As they sat and waited, these parents thought about their kids who've been through so much in the last two years. And now this. The mental health situation has not been good at all due to COVID. And Lord, they done already blamed it on mental health. <laughs> Whew. They done already blamed it on mental health, man. Incidents like this, obviously, uh, make it much worse. We were worried about the schools going virtual because, you know, the kids had mental health issues and everything. But sitting in the car. Was Damn, they got everybody with the, with the mental health bug. They Super Gremlins has have gotten everybody on the same accord to whenever something bad happens, violent happens, especially when it involves a Super Gremlin shooting somebody, it was because they were suffering from mental health issues. Well, like, you know, maybe if they were virtual, none of this would have happened. So it's like a conflict. Officials tell us that. Um, no, honey, if they were virtual, it would have just happened in the streets versus at school. Crisis counselors will be at the school throughout the weekend and into next week for students, staff, and parents who want to talk. In Rockville, Jackie Benson, News 4. Gang violence and other kind of violence. Get away! That's what they have. 